Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Habita fillah, continue on in our revision of uh, Umdat Ahkam. We reach the 10th hadith on Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha qalat kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يعجبه والتيمن في تنعوله وترجوله وطهوره وفي شأنه كله متفق عليه in this hadith that's in uh, Bukhari and Muslim the hadith of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها in which she said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to uh, يعجبه used to love uh, doing the uh, using his right to uh, comb his hair, to put his sandals on, he began with the right, and to uh, make a tahara, you know, and wudu and, and ghusl, and all of his fares. Wafi sha'nihi kulli. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we learn that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for those things which are. Uh, for example, eating and drinking and taking and receiving and wearing clothing that he used the right. He began with the right side, that he preferred this. And those uh, various uh, ways of using the right, they have they also fit on the uh, from the various ahkam, meaning that some can be wajib uh, to do and some can be Mustahab, recommended. And we also see that the other uh, things that the Messenger of Allah والسلام, did from uh, making his stinja, cleaning himself, uh, and so on and so forth, that he used the left. So when you make a stinja, you use the left, and you should not wipe, use your, your right hand to akramakum Allah to clean your private parts. And that is from, uh, you know, there's tahrim there, nahi li tahrim. So there is, uh, that's impermissible, meaning muharram, to do so, to clean uh, with the, the right. And the, for example, uh, entering the bathroom, uh, leaving from the bathroom, and taking off the shoes, that those uh, beginning with the left, however, they do not, they are not, uh, if, you, if you do so, do the right, there is no sin. Whereas the istinja, by cleaning the private parts, akramak mullah, then there is sin with that. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith uh, is the, uh, using the, uh, wearing your, shoe are using uh, putting on the right shoe first using your right hand and putting on the right side first uh another benefit we gain from this hadith also um in the turu uh, julihi in the uh, combing one's hair uh to use the right unless of course someone was left-handed and that's out of their uh you know ability to do so uh, this is also istihbab, the that is recommended to uh, wash with the right, and it is also recommended to uh, comb the hair uh, with the right hand. So these are recommended. There, that's from istihbab. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows that. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, uh, gave preference to the right, and the right is generally used for that which is um, positive, if you will, like shaking hands and greeting and, and so on and so forth, as we mentioned. In the next hadith, hadith uh, the 11th hadith, on Nu'im al Mujmir. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال إن أمتي يدعون يوم القيامة غرا مهجلين مهجلين من إثار من آثار الوضوء 
فمن استطاع منكم أن يطيل غرته فليفعل وفي لفظ رأيت أبا هريرة يتوضأ فغسل وجهه ويديه حتى كاد يبلغ المنكبين ثم غسل رجليه حتى رفع إلى ساقين ثم قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن أمتي يدعون يوم القيامة غر مهاجلين مهاجلين ومهاجلين من أثار من أثر الوضوء فمن استطاع منكم أن يطيل غرته فليفعل وفي اللفظ لمسلم سمعت خليلي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول تبلغ حلية من المؤمن حيث يبلغ الوضوء In this group of hadith, the first hadith being the hadith of Nu'im al-Mujmir رضي الله تعالى عن that Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه that he uh, narrated on the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that he said that verily my nation on the day of judgment will be raised with uh, you know, light on their faces and light on their limbs that are uh, washed for wudu. And so whoever is able from amongst you to increase it and increase the light, then he should do so. And in another narration of this hadith, uh, and this is uh, Nu'im al-Mujmir, he said, I saw Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, make wudu. And he washed his face and his hands until he reached his shoulders. Then he uh, washed his uh, his feet until he reached his uh, his calves. Then he said, "I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that my nation will be raised on the day of judgment uh, by the light of their uh, wudu. Uh, so whoever is able to increase this light, then they should do so." And in another narration. And then in Sahih Muslim, uh, he said, meaning Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala, he said, Sama'tu Khalili, I heard my, you know, my beloved companion, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying that the mu'min will be raised on the day of judgment uh, with jewelry uh, where they made uh, wudu, in the places they made wudu. Uh, in this group of hadith, the benefits that we gain are immense. But however, we'll make bilikhtasar as this is the way that we are uh, making this revision of this uh, of these group of ahadith. And so what we gain from this hadith, or these ahadith, first... It shows the fadila or the superiority of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that will be raised yawm al qiyamah by the uh, light of wudu. You know, where we made wudu, those places will be light. You know, they will be bright and and uh, they will be uh, light and they will be, uh, this is a sign of uh, the mu'min and a characteristic of the mu'min from making wudu. So this is a fadila on this ummah. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the fadl of making a good, uh, a perfect wudu. Uh, an, another benefit also obtained from this hadith is that the uh, the qaida that the scholars mention and al jaza min jins al amal that the reward is commensurate with the action. So, for example, in this hadith. Uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported that the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said in the Ummati Yud'una Yom Al Qiyamati Ghurin Mahajalain Min Athu Min Athar al Wudu Faminasatha Minkum and Yutila Gharatu Fil Yafa. So for the person who is increases their um and perfects their wudu in this life and is very thorough, that that increases their light in the hereafter. So there's a relationship 
with the al jaza the reward, min jins al It's a part and commensurate with the actual deed that you did. So, meaning you increased your your light, so to speak, uh, in this life, and it will increase your light in the hereafter. Or your purity in this life to where you'll have the purity of light in the hereafter. Uh, another benefit of this hadith Uh, or actually, I'll just mention this as really the last benefit of this uh, hadith, which is a very important one, because we see that Abu Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, that he uh, increased his wudu, and the scholars, they differ over the reason being, and the, the you know, is this hadith... Uh, yeah, they, they have different reasons with regards to this, uh, what was seen and witnessed that Abu Huraira did. That means this, and some of the scholars, they mentioned that this was not the Ada of Abu Huraira. That means he did not do this all the time, but he was seen doing this. When, and when he heard uh, this hadith from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what he understood. So what we can gain from this hadith, the most important thing with regards to this uh, action of Abu Huraira, and we're ordered to follow the son of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is it shows that there, uh, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in, as with the ulama, up until, really until the Day of Judgment, uh, that ijtihad, that they have ijtihad in their understanding of the nasus, meaning that the text maybe a sound and authentic text, but they're going to understand it differently. And that ijtihad is from the religion that as long as ijtihad does not go against the nas. And that does not mean ijtihad and aqidah. We're not talking about in creed that this one understands that Allah is everywhere and this one understands Allah is you know, some some other, or this one, يعطل sifat. this one negates the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about uh, ijtihad and ittiqad. But we're talking about ijtihad in those affairs which ijtihad is possible in when there is no clear nas that, uh, that it is contradicting. So here, Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, and he understood that by increasing wudu, that for him this meant to actually increase the the range of the, the wudu instead of stopping at the elbow to actually go beyond the elbow and he was seen up to his shoulder. And so this shows that uh, that ijtihad is permissible, not meaning that it's permissible for us to do this, but it just shows that ijtihad is a part of our deen and the scholars from the, the, the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala and Mijma'in, up until current times, they have uh, ijtihad, and there's various reasons for scholars to differ, and there is ijtihad, which is permissible, and then there's ijtihad, which is impermissible, and those are whole other issues uh, to get into depth in those uh, books in usul of fiqh, and um, books which talk about the ikhtilaf of the ulama, and so on and so forth. So, uh, a last benefit of this hadith uh, that is definitely important and worth mentioning is that from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which was the ad of the salaf it was the, the habit of the salaf is that they would uh, uh, tajmir al-masjid tajmir al-masjid and this means uh, tajmir al-masjid it means to uh, make the masjid smell good with uh, like bukhur, or using incense and things like this to make the masjid uh, to smell good. And so that this was the sunnah, and this was the methodology of the salaf, meaning that the salaf used to practice this uh, for the masajid. And that is why the rawi of this hadith, the narrative of this hadith, uh, Nu'im al-Mujmir, this comes from uh, uh, tajmir, from the word tajmir. So he was known as Naim al Mujmir, uh, perhaps because he used to to uh, al Masjid. He used to make the Masjid smell good, and we also have a narration of Aisha radiallahu anha that she said, 
that Amr uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi bina al-masajid fi dur wa an tunadhif wa tutayyim and this is a hadith akhraju uh, Tirmidhi wa Ibn Majah and also uh, Abu Dawood and in this uh, narration on Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to uh, <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ commanded to, when building the masajid, build it, uh, build it uh, in one floor, I believe, and to cleanse and uh, perfume the masjid. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد